Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So tonight we're going to do a little um, basic Joe Newman motor. For those of you that um, haven't built one or want to build one, it's going to go over some simple things and some more complicated stuff. Um, the Joe Newman motor is basically a big coil, like this one's 10 pounds right here, um, with really strong magnets in it works best. These are um, two inch neo magnets, two of them quarter inch. And then some sort of timing. On this one it's an opto timing. So this would be off right here and then on, off. And um, it doesn't really matter if you have you know mechanical timing like this one. This is an old one, a little bit smaller one for each each side. Uh, but the main thing is that um, it's pulsing. Um, Joe Newman had a pretty sophisticated commutator that was all mechanical, but um, you really don't have to do that. You could use an optical timing with a pulse width modulator like this to kind of break it up. Um, instead of having all those on and offs on a big mechanical commutator, um, you could just do it simply with a pulse width modulator. And um, so on the basic circuit, as the wires come out, um, in order to get output, which we're going to be um, showing on the scope, uh, every time this every time this timing turns on and then turns off, um, this field is energized and then collapses, and you get a really high voltage spike um, called back EMF. And um, you could actually do work with that. So in this scenario, we're just put a full bridge rectifier right on the coil and then you have your wires that come down from that to the circuit so this is actually just split right here so this is the coil and then to the circuit and then the other ones from coil to circuit and bridge rectifier and then the bridge rectifier comes through here and into a capacitor um, in this case I have a um, SCR pulse circuit and this has a little zinger diode that's for 60 volts so um, once this gets up a little bit past 60 about 61 and a half um, it triggers this SCR and then it dumps into this battery um, these are 48 volt batteries and then this is also 48 volt batteries underneath um, you know when you do a big coil like this you get a lot of resistance so um, this motor would be better at a higher voltage but it still runs pretty nice at 48 um, this one much smaller coil so you could do 12 with this this is a really old one um, probably 22 years old or more but um, just basic you know mechanical commutator so on this circuit this is all optical timing which is makes things really nice you know you just cut out the notch where you want to turn on and off and then I have a small MOSFET um, Sometimes I pull out the output right here, but um, the full bridge rectifier is probably the most efficient on collecting everything. And uh, I put a little switch in right here so that um, while we're running, um, you could see it with charging and without, so you could see on the scope. So, um, and then this will be our amperage from the battery. This is going to be the the voltage on the capacitor, and then this is the amperage that's dumping into the second battery bank. Um, for those of you that always like to loop stuff, you can't can't loop this back into here. It's just going to make a direct short. So you really need to go into a second battery unless you have uh, parallel windings or something like that. So so let's get this thing started up and um, you can see how she works. So this is not a self-starting motor like this, but it's only one circuit. So pretty efficient motor I mean seven milliamps <laughs> it's pretty pretty amazing uh, and then you can see it's kind of starting to charge right now real slow um, and then on the scope it's kind of hard to see but I'm gonna turn this up a little bit so get a little bit better waveform so let's turn this all the way up first so this is full power so we're 38 milliamps and um, you can see it's, it charges up pretty quick. Dumps right around 250 to 300 milliamps at um, 
61, 63 volts. Um, so, so this is it running with the output taken out. So what I'm going to do is is turn the switch off, and we're going to stop the output going out. So every time it turns off, once we're doing once per revolution right now. So I'm going to turn off the output, and you can see the spike right here. This is the back EMF when this is on, and then off, on, and then off. So each square is 50 volts. So this is our on right about 50 volts, and then down. So we're one, two hundred. 150, 200 volts coming out of this motor as it's turning on and off when we started with the 48 volt battery. And um, so then when we turn the switch back on, you can see now it's gone. So now the system is removing it from the motor and using it at another time or charging a battery or you could run lights or all kinds of things like that, which is pretty neat. Um, and now we're going to go to the pulse width modulator. So the pulse width modulator um, is one way to control the speed of the motor. Uh, but it also gives you the ability to chop up the motor, kind of like what Nguyen did with his... Um, he had a, a commutator that had a whole bunch of cut cutouts to where it could turn on off. But uh, we could do it like this with the pulse width modulator. So as you can see, the motor's slowing down. But there's also a lot of spikes in there so you could see it this is like 50 percent but there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eight nine there's 25 right there and we could actually go even wider and get even more but now let me turn this switch back off and now you can see all the spikes that you're getting so instead of one you know you're getting quite a few we could turn this where you could see all the spikes in there so that that's because of the pulse width modulator. So when I turn the switch back on, we're going to get rid of this and put it into a capacitor to charge a battery. So see now it's all the way up here. And you can see it kind of going down and up. It's because it's charging the capacitor and discharging. So now we're making use of that instead of just shorting it out in the system or anything like that. Now we're charging this capacitor and we're able to dump this energy into that battery. So we turn this thing down more and more you can see how many pulses really go in there it's quite a lot so we turn this off again so we go even more you can see how many times and then when we're full speed now we're only getting one one big spike so now we're only getting one per revolution and now it's going to the capacitor. So you could really see how this pulse width modulator can help and help get a lot more output out of these motors without doing something complicated. So now it's being removed. We'll turn it up to full power so you can kind of see how it goes here. So we're only using 40 milliamps right now out of the battery. And this is our output going to a second battery. So you'll see the amperage. That's the amperage of it. So pretty neat. Anyway, if you guys have any other questions, just leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching.